Grant, um, first of all, thank you for coming on the show. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Grant. Yeah, thanks for having me, Colin. Great to be here. Um, Grant, I said this. I, For the first time in my life, John Brooks on the back line, Bobby Wood, a 17-year-old. Um, I'm, I'm concerned we don't play uh, Nagby as much as I think we should. But for the first time in my life, we finish fourth, we lose some games, and I'm okay with it. I do. I, I see progress. And Grant, it is like I'm an outlier. Am I too optimistic or am I wearing rose colored glasses? You're not. I, I do think what you would say is you want to look at this as the U.S. going to the semifinals of a major tournament, which I think is a legitimate way of looking at it. Uh, do you want to look at it as the U.S. went three and three in this tournament and beat the teams that they were supposed to and didn't beat the teams they weren't supposed to? Um, there's just all these different ways of looking at it. And so I'm not extreme in one way or the other. I think there are definitely, as you say, some positive things to take out of this tournament. The biggest one for me being that the U.S. finally has a central defense pairing that yes. is built to last in Jeff Cameron and John Brooks, yes. especially Brooks, who's just 23 and was fantastic in this tournament. Yes. Uh, and I agree with you. I, I, I think he really was their most uh, consistently dynamic player. Let me ask you this. Uh, for the Jurgen Klinsmann, and again, I am remedial here. I am going to lean on you and others, Grant. He he tends to um, be reluctant with some young players, not all. He likes those kind of physical grinder guys. He, 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 that's kind of his thing. He's That's his approach. Is there any of the criticisms with Klinsmann? that you would jump on and say legitimate criticism? For me, during this tournament, Klinsman, I think overall, had a decent tournament. But what I would say as far as the criticisms are that he himself preached, go for it. I want our guys to go for it and be courageous. And I don't think his lineup choices totally backed that up. When you look at the Argentina game, and, and obviously there were three starters suspended for that game, so that puts you in a hole. But to start Chris Wondolowski, who's a, a very good MLS player, but not of international quality, yes. to start him in that game was, I thought, a bad call. Uh, I thought Zardes should have started up top. I thought Fabian Johnson should have been at left midfield. Uh, you know, Kyle Beckerman, I wasn't surprised that he filled in for Jermaine Jones. But at this point in his career, not international quality. I would have liked to have seen Nagby get a shot. Yes. Uh, I think he could have handled it. I think the U.S. really needed someone who could possess the ball in that game because you saw how difficult it was. The second the U.S. won the ball, which was rarely, they lost it immediately again. And Nagby would have been helpful in that situation. So that's, for me, like the, sort of the conservatism of Klinsman yeah. during... Before and during games, I, I thought his substitutions could have come earlier uh, in games uh, to go to a Christian Pulisic or a Darlington Nagby sooner. And it's hard to criticize Clinton when he's waiting that long and they still win the game, as was happening against Costa Rica, Ecuador, and Paraguay. But when it's happening in games the U.S. is losing, you're just like, you know, bring these guys on and make a change. Is there a Klinsman criticism that you don't buy, that you think is embellished, overplayed, or simply knee-jerk from our passionate fans? Good question. You know, I, I think sometimes people are unfair with Klinsman. Uh, I think anyone who blames the coach completely or the players completely has it wrong. Everyone deserves some of the blame when you lose. Everyone deserves some of the credit when you win. And so I think, are we at a time right now where the quality of the players in the U.S. is anywhere close to that of Argentina? No, we're not. And so I think he is hamstrung at times. That said, I also look back at previous U.S. coaches like Bruce Arena, like Bob Bradley, and I don't think the quality of their players was any better than the U.S. has currently, and they got a few more positive results against the top 10 teams in the world in games that mattered. So I know that Klinsman is trying to do something different than those coaches. He's trying to bring in a, a proactive style where you play a high back line, you possess the ball, uh, but it's, it's not just about I guess you could say that he's lacking the players. I think sometimes his 
uh, his approach has has made it more difficult than in previous regimes where the U.S. was able to get results against top Let, Grant Wall joining us. Let me ask you this, though. If our skill level, because of our cultural deficiencies in the sport, it is not our, we're not defined by soccer. Uh, we love the sport. We've got the American outlaws, but we are not defined like a Brazil or an Argentina where it is the national sport. Could I make the argument, Grant, that those cities, because of immense pressure, have more turnover, uh, turmoil? often chaos. They go into rebuilding modes. They expect more. I mean, Messi saying this morning, I don't want to play for the national team. That if we if we simply stayed the course with Klinsman and used what we do well in America, we build well in America, and when we're an underdog, it seems to light a fire under us. And that in a World Cup, we wouldn't have to play the Big Eight. Some would knock each other out. Some would not get past group stage. That what we do well is building we do have our best group of young players, and that Klinsman out and starting over actually could send us backwards. I think it's a good point, because when you look at other soccer cultures, developed soccer cultures, I don't think it's necessarily a positive thing that they fire their coaches all the time, and that there's so much pressure that that's what happens, because it does prevent you from building over the long term. Yes. And so I get what U.S. soccer has tried to do by having Klinsman in there for a long period of time. So I think in a sense that is an advantage for the U.S. if you're trying to build something. Now, at the same time, I do wonder when you look at the history of national team coaches anywhere around the world, more than a four-year cycle, the second four-year cycle tends not to go as well in those countries. And maybe that's because the players start to tune out the coach. Maybe, you know, some of the techniques that the coaches use don't work as well, but it's very rare. The, the current Germany coach, Yogi Lowe, is one exception. Yeah. But it's very rare for a second four-year term of a national team coach to go better than the first. So you have these two competing things going on. But clearly the second the U.S. decided to extend Klinsman to 2018, and this was all the way back in December of 2013, they had decided this is what we're going to do, and we're going to stick to it. And he, actually, I think it's a good thing to have a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. Now, Klinsman has certainly tested that over the last year and a half, especially last year at the Gold Cup, but his teams do tend to get results when their backs are against the wall. I'll give him credit for that. And so far, at least in the most major of tournaments, World Cup 2014, and this Copa America, Klinsman has gotten results from his team. So... I'm at the point now where Clinton is going to be there in 2018, and we'll see if he can get even better results. He's already said he wants to make the semifinals of World Cup 2018. There's a lot of work to do between now and 2018 if you're going to do that.